What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. If many of you don't know, we're fixing up this old abandoned Mitsubishi Lancer. We gave it a tune up and now we're gonna give it a fresh paint job. We just got back from a two week long road trip vacation in Colorado. We did lots of hiking and sightseeing in Colorado Springs, Denver, Idaho Springs, Boulder, and Rocky Mountain National Park. We enjoyed our time off, but we're ready to finish the Lancer and we even got us a sticker to add to the collection. So let's finish prepping the car and head to the paint store to pick up the stealth gray color y'all voted for in the comments last video. If you remember the paint on this car was extremely bad and the roof was really rusted and it was kind of pitting down in it and all along the doors and the sides, the, the white paint was faded off and what I read was notorious for this year model for some reason. So in the last video, if you remember, Tyler tried sanding it with some 400 grit and it just wasn't working. We had to go down to some 120 to get it down to bare metal and then it was the, the paint, the metal was actually still stained up with rust. So we got some self-etching primer and primed the whole top and I think that's going to give it a a little better like chemical adhesion so we got a good start on prepping the car we got the front bumper off and the rear bumper off and that's going to help a lot with painting we still got some more prep work to do on the bumpers like probably sand it with some 400 and then clean it real good inside and out and then we got to figure out when we take the door not, door handles off that side how you're going to get in the car after so maybe maybe we'll just roll the window down on that side and that way we can reach in and open the door but I'm not really sure how people do that. So let's start with those door handles and figure something out. All right, to remove the door handles, you have to take the whole front, the panel off. We're gonna have to get this styrofoam out and then pop this off. There's a screw here and a screw back there. Then take out the linkages. It's not too hard. All right, first I'm gonna take this styrofoam out. Anything plastic usually tears up on these old cars that we have. Let's see where it's at. So, wait, so how are we going to get into the car? What, after we take the door handles off? Yeah. I think the best way is just roll this window down. We'll keep the rest of them up and then we'll plastic over it. And then that way we can get in, reach in and open it this way. But I don't know how the pros do it. So this is a 10 millimeter. And then the other one is a Phillips. And are we painting the door handle or are we gonna wrap it like we're doing the roof? I don't know yet. I think I might would like to, to wrap these in carbon fiber and maybe the mirrors, we could do that in carbon fiber. Cause the hood and the roof are both gonna be carbon fiber. Yeah, I think that might actually look nice. All right, we got this out. This was the little, I don't know, that's the door latch. Here's the lock. I just left the lock in instead of taking that out. We'll tape all this up. But I think what I'm going to do, instead of rolling the window down now, I'm going to take this little latch out. And then I'll use a bungee cord to hold the door tight. And we need, whenever we need to get in, we'll just pull the door and then undo the bungee cord. And that way the door won't lock on us. I think that's going to be better than rolling the window down and all that kind of stuff. Let's take that out. We'll try it. I think this is going to be the easiest way. All right, so we just unbolted that latch right here and we got our bungee cord that we're going to use and see how it doesn't shut all the way. It kind of just stays open. Yeah, see if you have a big gap right here and we'll be spraying paint is going to find its way in and get all over the dash. So we need this door tight like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our bungee cord, hook it to this hole right here, and then hook it to something in there. That way it'll keep the door closed tight. Yeah, and then whenever we need to open it, we'll just pull on it 
and then reach in here and unhook the bungee cord. So I think that method will be way better than rolling down the window. I think so too. So let's finish up this last one and then we'll do the, the back bumper. So to remove the back door panel, there's four Phillips screws right here, right there, here, and here. And then you just start pulling on the bottom and then it should just come off. Kind of hard, you gotta just keep working your way around and then maybe wiggle up. There you go. Sounds like it's tearing it up, but it's not. Then you gotta go up. And plug the wire. And there's just two screws in here holding that back on. All right, we got both door handles off. Tyler's gonna clean them up real good and then sand that and then we'll tape it up we have some of this tape why didn't we just press down this latch to open the door that's a good question but where was that brilliant idea 10 minutes ago so maybe we can just put that Push down on this maybe. So maybe we'll try putting a, the latch back on. Thought I had a great idea with the bungee cord. All right, Tyler did a good job on getting all these door handles cleaned up and then re-sanded and taped up. She so wasn't my idea much better than your bungee cord idea. Yeah, see that's the problem with your generation. What? You're always trying to outsmart your parents. Well, at least my idea worked pretty good. Yeah. And if anybody has any kind of tips for us, let us know because we definitely appreciate it and need it. This is our first ever paint job. And one of our subscribers told us about using weed eater string. So basically you put it under here and run it all the way down and it leaves that rubber piece up a little bit. Because if you put it flat and every time you paint it's just going to make like a little bridge. And then when you pull this off it's going to rip off some of your paint so this just keeps a little bitty gap so it's just things like that that we appreciate people telling us and uh helps us out a lot so let's go knock out the two bumpers and get that part over with all right so we got our two bumpers and now we're going to wash them with some degreaser soap that way we don't sand oils into the bumpers and then we're, after we wash it we're going to sand it again and then it should be perfectly fine and good to go You could do the back bumper, I'll do the front, and we'll see whose comes out the best. All right. We're just gonna wash them down with these scuff pads. We don't have the, the maroon ones like most painters do. We just have the green ones. We're just trying to get all the oils and grease off of it before we sand it. We're going to sand it with some 400 grit. This one has a lot of road rash on it. I think you got the easier bumper. All right, got it all washed down. So when you sand it, basically just want to scuff it all up. Go this way for a while. And don't bear down on these corners because you'll go straight down to, to the black plastic. All you right. want every single square inch of it scuffed up. All right, we got them all sanded down. Looks like Tyler did a pretty good job. Basically, all we want to do is scuff it up and get the clear coat off. That way the new paint would stick to it and it wouldn't be sticking to the clear coat. I think that's the best way. We used 400. I don't think we needed to go down anymore. 
So before we paint it, we'll clean it again and put some wax and grease remover on it and then spray it. So you ready to go buy the paint? Let's do it. Can't wait to see that car painted. Let's go to the paint store. just got back from the paint store we got everything we need it was a lot more expensive than I thought it was gonna be all of this was 800 bucks and I think we only paid what 425 for the car but some good news is they was out of the middle of the line paint so they sold us just the top of the line premium paint for the same price as the cheaper paint and we got the clear coat which is their middle of the line brand metal lux so we got a prep all all this is a little over 800 bucks so good news is we got everything we need and upgraded paint and tyler's going to tell you a, a couple of bad news things all right so for the bad news we sanded the car with 400 grit but we talked to professionals and they said it's best to sand it with 600 grit since we're not going to use sealer so we're going to get back under our shade tree start sanding and we won't be able to paint in this video because it's supposed to rain this evening and it's best to paint early in the morning. So we're gonna go get that done. And it's best to sand outside since it makes so much dust in here. So we're gonna, that's why we like going under our shade tree.
All right guys, sorry we didn't make it to paint in this video. I promise you in the next video, we will be painting the car. The next video will be nothing but painting. We, uh, we spent two weeks in Colorado, so we're a little bit behind. And I know you've been waiting on this car a lot because we've been getting so many messages about it. Um, make sure you follow us on Instagram. We update a lot quicker on there. And we just got a little bit behind because we spent a lot of time at the paint store today because the guy up there was super nice and he taught us so much and we appreciate that. So if any of you have any tips, we are still a little nervous on painting, but I think we're gonna get it pretty good. So make sure you hit the notification little bell that way you don't miss the next video and we will see you next time.